But Kayla, first off, in your honest opinion, just you, and from what you've seen from the situation, do you believe that Alicia is a clean fighter? No, absolutely not. Be enjoying with Michaela Mayer, who's uh, returning to the ring, uh, coming up January 20th at the Echo Arena in Liverpool on ESPN for a crack at the IBF welterweight title. I'm Marcos Villegas for Fight Up TV, powered by State Trump VIP. Michaela, you're moving 135 to 147. Wow, that's, yes. that's quite a big jump. Uh, Well, you know, my last fight was at 142, so I was slowly moving up. I kind of knew this was going to happen before the world did, but um, it's, first of all, my body, this is where I should be naturally. You know, I started this camp at 160, so I'm coming down naturally. It's a comfortable weight. It's not too hard for me to make, and I'm still able to hold on to my strength, right? Um, but also just because I couldn't, didn't have the opportunity to stay at 135 and fight Katie because Katie was busy. I couldn't jump to 140 and go for Chantel because Chantel was busy with Katie. So this was the next immediate, um, opportunity for me. And I had a, had a slow year, not the type of year that I want to have, but it's a setback I had to take. So I did that, took those few fights. Um, and this is where the next opportunity was for me. And I want to be in big fights. So I said, hell yeah, let's go to 147. No, certainly it's a chance to win a, a title. So I could see the reasoning as to like why, you know, you, you went into it, you know, multi-weight world not champion. Just that, not, not just that, not just that the titles, but it's a, a fighting someone with the name like Tasha Jonas. I want to be in big fights against, you know, the belts are great. But like at this point in my career, I want to make sure I check these girls off my hit list. You know, these these other great women who have been in this generation of women's boxing, like I want to fight them. I want to challenge myself against the best. And so that's a big factor also. Yeah, because I was thinking, why not just wait? Why not wait for for Cameron and, and Taylor to you know finish their business? Well, good thing I didn't because now they're about to have a trilogy, right? <laughs> so see, I don't want to sit around and wait for anybody. This, especially in this sport, you never know what's going to happen. It would have been stupid for me to sit out at one thirty five, still holding my weight down, not letting my body fill out, just for for what? For no immediate big fight. This was the best move for me. Mm -hmm. Well, there I'm is Serrano. Still floating I'm not 23 around. In the morning anymore. I'm not like in a position where I can just sit around and keep building myself. I'm ready to go. Yeah. I'm ready for the best. So, you know, you mentioned uh, 160 uh, is your walk around weight and you're going down to uh, 147. It makes things a, a lot more comfortable. I would imagine uh, a lot happier fighter, not having to uh, be so conscious about, you know, the, the food you eat. I know you still have to, but I yeah. guess it's, it's a little less now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Just uh, stay more fueled. Like, you know, I just started really focusing on that weight maybe two weeks ago, whereas before I had to start that calorie deficit 10 weeks out, you know, just from the very beginning of camp. So I always felt really good in the beginning of camp and then you just had to fight through. And, you know, I think I'm just thinking better now. I'm able to try new things and be be like more clear headed. I'm just sharper because I'm not just tired and trying to survive and just getting the conditioning in. I was always really well conditioned, but now I feel like I'm conditioned. I'm a little bit more explosive. Um, and I'm just thinking clearer. Dang. I just realized from 160 to 135, you were doing that. 160 to 130. 130. But at that Jeez. point I was walking around at like 157. Mm. So I would cut down, which it doesn't seem like a lot to you, three pounds of a big whoop. But it no, was no, no. I, I used to wrestle. I, I, I know it's, it's a lot. Two pounds yeah. is a lot. So you know? fifty-five ish. You know, I, you know, get, get into camp. You know, fifty-five ish, and then I, the six, and then I'd cut down to one thirty. So it was still a lot, but um, you know, I did what I had to do. I had a great run at one thirty. You know, I don't regret it, and it's just time for me to take on another division. Yeah, you know, I, I just because I know you do the uh, the hot bath uh, technique for the weight cuts. And I just remember seeing a, a video with Chris Cyborg doing that where she's like crying, like in pain, like suffering. And, and I don't know how, how bad were those weight cuts? Uh, I don't think you can compare what I would do to like an MMA fighter. I think they do things very differently. I don't know exactly how Cyborg does it, but the bath is the easiest part for me. Like I stay fully hydrated. One of the reasons I do the bath is I don't like dehydrating my body. And I don't like going to bed dehydrated. So I don't like making weight the night before weigh-ins and then having a hard time sleeping, being dehydrated, being hungry. I stay fully hydrated. I even eat the night before weigh-ins. And then I wake up and I have that last four or five pounds. Because I've stayed hydrated and kept my body fueled, even minimally with, with the food, but like keep my body hydrated, that water comes off in two, three baths, two, three, 20 minute baths. So I, 
uncomfortable. You do it right and it's comfortable. Um, but that's the easiest part, too. Mm. Do, do you get really hangry or, or do you consider yourself really bad hangry? I do get hangry. Yeah. I do. Sometimes I don't even realize it. And then, um, you know, my boyfriend will get irritated with me at this point. I'm like, oh, I get, you're, I'm coming down. Yeah, I'm coming down to wait. Like, you just got to have to deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> well, not not so much this time because you know you do have a little bit of leeway. Uh, That's what I this. thought. That's what I thought. But oh, I've no. had a little moments. <laughs> oh, you you pop off on him? I'm so no, no, no. I just you know it's so minimal, but like he picks up on it. Oh yeah. Ah, okay. Okay. Well, you know you gotta <laughs> keep the peace, Mi Michaela. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so th this fight, uh, ten rounds, right? It, it finally got fixed. I it's it's ten rounds. It's ten rounds. Um, I, I honestly don't know. Okay. I know How I do you should not know? know right now because I don't know if you watched our press conference, hmm. but I asked again, I'd already asked and boxer had told me no, sort of putting it on Tasha saying that her team didn't want it. I don't know what the exact, I don't want to point fingers. I, I really don't know. I was going through with my manager and blah, blah. So I get to the uh, press conference and apparently Tasha said, I'm fine with three minute rounds. I said, Oh really? Okay. So boxer let's let us have, three minute rounds. They seem like they might be open to it, even though Ben Shalom says he likes the two minute rounds. That's his preferable, you know, that's his opinion. That's what he prefers. Um, and my, my manager, George has been on the phone trying to figure it out. And I kept, I keep throughout camp. I'm texting my manager like, Hey, are we doing three minutes? Are we doing three minutes? Still no word. Still no word. I have no idea. Huh. <laughs> I won't know till I get there. Now I'm always training for three minute rounds. Like I don't spar two minute rounds. I always train for three minute rounds. I, you know, it's one of the reasons why I've been pushing. Cause you know, my style, I'm not necessarily a one punch knockout artist, but like, I like to break my opponent down over time and to do that, you need a little bit more time. So I've always trained for three minute rounds. It's just my thing, but we'll see. I'll, we'll know when we get there. Either way, I'll be ready. Isn't that sort of stuff like in the contract already, or it's just kind of like on the fly. Uh, well, the contract was all already done by the time we, brought it up mm. like the contract well it wasn't done but it was like we were agreed we had agreed to all the terms right yeah. so then brought this issue up and yeah i've been looking to put it into the contract so there's no reason i mean i brought it up what six weeks ago five weeks ago was that press conference so it's not like i waited to the last minute there's been plenty of time to put it in yeah you know it's certainly a uh issue that uh, all you ladies um want to see changed you guys all want uh three minute rounds um not everyone not everyone. Not well, thing. I would say like a majority of the women want three minute rounds. Not all want it. Trust Not me. All they know they can't handle it. They know they can't handle it. A lot of these girls don't have the engine for it. That's why, um, you know, uh, Serrano said, let's make it a choice. Hmm. Let's make it a choice. We can gradually move towards that. People can start running more and working on their conditioning. But <laughs> there's definitely a handful of girls who wouldn't be able to hang. Like who? You a handful. <laughs> stir the pot, Michaela. Let's There's stir the pot. Some. We know some that gas out. Bob Gardner's <laughs> one of them. She's Boom. begging. She's dying for us not to have three men around. She, <laughs> you know, she would die. Oh well, since you brought her up, I was going to bring her up later. Uh, but you know, you're bringing her up now. So you know, Michaela. First off, in your honest opinion, just you, and from what you've seen from the situation, do you believe that Elise is a clean fighter? No, absolutely not. If you look what she was tested positive for. Now, I, I always thought that she looked extremely ripped. And I've had people tell me, tell me, oh, she's on to me. She's on to me. And I'm like, no, she's a Christian. She's a Christian. She's always tweeting all this Christian stuff, right? You know, she loves God. So she wouldn't do something like that. <laughs> Lo and behold, um, what she got tested positive for wasn't like minimal traces of stuff that can be found in, you know, cross-contamination, like protein or whatever, lotion. Like those are some hardcore uh testosterone levels and whatever some other black market drug that you can't even get in america right i can't remember the name of it but um that was some hardcore stuff so i'm not really sure why one she's going on like it's no big deal and that she's clean it's kind of um crazy honestly and she thinks taking her test three months later is gonna prove her innocent but the real problem is with the governing bodies and the um the uh, commissions and everyone who should have already stripped her already, you know, there's gotta be um, more consistency amongst athletes who don't follow the rules. Mm. Otherwise, what's the point?
What's the point? What's going on? We should all be, there's no transparency here. We should, we should be knowing what's going on. You know, what did you make of, you mentioned it, the test that she came out and she, you know, she said she did a, a test on her own independent test that exonerated her, that it, it showed that, you know, um, she had did nothing wrong and it cleared her. <laughs> I think it's crazy how she actually thinks that that would work. Since when can we go take our own tests from our own uh, lab and prove our own innocence. Like it doesn't work that way. Not to mention whatever she was testing for, you don't hair follicles only stay in your system or it only stays in your hair for three months. And she waited till a little over three months to go and take that test. So you that doesn't prove anything. That doesn't prove anything. I don't know. I don't know where her, she needs a publicist, honestly, to reel her in because she's off the rocker with all that, honestly. Mm. Um, and we all know that, <laughs> except for a little simple sim fans you know given the fact you did fight her i, I know it was for a title fight and, and maybe you could fill me in there was testing for your guys's fight correct nope there wasn't no, no testing, testing no for wbc our, clean boxing we were program. supposed to be in, yeah we were supposed to be in the wbc clean boxing program and no one ever came to test me we got tested once after the fight mm. the testing i'm telling you even for this fight i've been tested once once like there's, and I had to beg for the testing. I had to like keep asking about it, asking about the testing, asking about the testing. Um, it's just, it's too easy to get away with. The consistency is not there. Like the testing should be more consistent, more random. Like it's too easy to get away with. That's what all these fighters are doing it. So wait, 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 I'm, I'm confused now. What, why wasn't that? Because if, if you're uh, um, in the top, um, five or 10 of the WBC and you're fighting for a WBC title, you have to do the clean boxing programming. Isn't that like the, the 365? Yeah. And I was in it, but mm. I don't know. No one ever came. Mm. Okay. Then I didn't have the, the, I didn't yeah. have the WBC. Yeah. She had the WBC belt. So I assume yeah. she was in it. I don't know if she got tested mm. for it. Mm. I don't know. Okay. Then given that then, um, Michaela, do you have any suspicion for your guys' fight that she may have been enhanced in your opinion, even though there was a test, you said, you know what you said about it, but they did do a test and both you guys passed. Well, we, ta we they, they tested us the day after or the day, the night of the fight. Like that's easy to pass, you know, when you're getting tested. Right. So I think that's what the, the whole issue is here is that we don't know her whole legacy now is in question. We don't know when she started doing that. Um, yeah, we just don't know. So to me, she loses all her credibility. And that's the problem with popping hot. Was it the first time that she got caught or was it the first time that she did it or was it the first time that she got caught? Mm. I think it was just the first time she got caught. So then what does that do with the status of, of that win over you and in the future with a fight with her? Um, it doesn't do anything for my fight with her in the past. You know, it, I, that's not all my focus is on. Like, um, I can't go back, you know, whatever happened, you can't go back and, and change how it's affected that division, which is also another tough part of the whole situation. You know, the whole division was ruffled up because of it and her coming out of nowhere also is kind of a sign, but, um, you can't go back and change that. You know, I've moved on from it. Um, in the future, will we fight again? I have to decide if that's something that I'd want to give her the opportunity of doing. If I want to give her the opportunity of another big payday, another big opportunity to shine because um, I don't think she deserves it. I don't understand why she hasn't been punished, why she hasn't been stripped, why she hasn't you know, faced the repercussions of what she did. It's sort of just like going under the under the rug, right? I mean, have you heard of the next step? I don't know what's going on. And it, it's really bad for the sport because there's no consistency with this drug testing and there's no punishment. There's no fear of, of taking this stuff and testing positive because there's there's no punishment. Yeah, no, it's it's, it's, it's uh it's something that's endemic in in all sports, and, and you being part of the Olympic team, I, I would imagine you were privy to you know all that other stuff that happened in the other sports uh, when mm -hmm. you're coming up at well. So yeah, it is an endemic problem uh, in in all sports. But thing is, you know, uh, it seems they're always one step ahead. You know, technology is always making leaps and bounds where it's making it harder and harder for everyone to be uh, on a playing field. I, I always I hear people say, "Let them all juice." That's the only way you can ensure that everyone's fair. <laughs> Let them all juice. No, I know. no. I know, I know. It's wrong. for the integrity of the sport. You can't. But I'm saying that's the only foolproof way. 
that you know everyone's no, on the left playing field. There's ways, trust me. They're just yeah. not being. They're not. They're not trying. They're not. Mm-hmm. The testing needs to be a lot more consistent and a lot more random. You know, I've been in camp for eight weeks now, and I just finally got tested yesterday. Mm-hmm. It's just inconsistent, I mean, like you said. Yeah, like. It's a, it's going to be way harder to catch somebody and just catching them once in 10 weeks than it is, you know, it's going to be way hard to catch somebody. It's too easy. Yeah, there's there's a lot of topics in, in women's boxing right now, Michaela. That being one of them, uh, we touched on the rounds and Amanda dropping her belt because of the WBC not wanting to step back from uh, the ruling of not making uh, the women fight for one more minute. They're basing it on a study they did with UCLA saying uh citing brain damage are are you in agreement with that i don't know what tests they did but you can't go off whatever tests they did let's say it was even three years ago because women's boxing in the last three years has grown so much and it's maybe maybe those tests were valid but with this generation of of boxing we're going to need some new tests because girls are on and a whole nother level. And, you know, I think what Serrano did was right, making it a decision because you can't force everyone to do it. Maybe not yet. Um, but to ha- to give the, the elites, the top girls, the decision to be able to do it and be able to get the opportunity to show like, Hey, we can do it. If you're at this level, you can, um, you know, that's just the, that's the best way. That's the most non-combative way to, to do it is just to prove that we can, if we have the choice. So, um, I think over time it'll change. Maybe they're just not ready for it, but uh, ultimately I think it's it's holding back our development because three minute rounds are going to allow us our ring IQ to grow. We're going to have to think more. We're going to have to strategize more. We have more time, so it's it'll really help us to grow technically. And until then, I think we're just going to be held back a little bit. Um, I know when I'm in the gym sparring three minute rounds and I'm going 10, 12 rounds, you know, you really start to think. You start to try new things. You get you click into a whole nother uh thought process instead of just fighting, fighting, fighting. And that's what you have to go back to when you're in the two minute round. You're you're talking about taking a step back. Um, USA boxing making the decision to allow uh transgender athletes to compete with women. You represented Team USA, you you were you know part of the Olympic team. Um, I've heard some of your take and, and other females take on this, but for, for us, you know, uh, how surprising was that uh, decision for you? Surprising? I'm not, I'm not going to say that it was all that surprising because it's been happening across the board in other sports. You know, we've seen it in swimming. Um, I immediately texted the head coach of USA Boxing after I heard that, and he was unaware of it. He looked into it, and it's because the IOC, the Olympic Committee, the International Olympic Committee approved it. And so it was something that USA Boxing, you know, by default sort of accepted because the Olympic Committee was accepting it. Here's my problem, and I'm sure you already saw my tweet. Hormone therapy is banned in sports. And well, let's talk about boxing, but in sports, hormone therapy is banned. So it doesn't matter how you feel about the LGBTQ plus community, right? You can be a supporter, you can not be a supporter. It doesn't matter. I'm a supporter, okay? But at this point, you have to understand that hormone therapy is banned. So that by default makes trans athletes ineligible to compete, period. You know, you, you, you can't have an exception for that. And a female's testosterone level is usually around 3.1, right? Um, they're going to allow a trans female to have no higher than five. So they're already like giving wiggle room when, when it comes to hormone therapy and levels. And you just can't do that. It completely disrupts the even level playing field. That sport works so hard to create. You know, it's why we have weight classes, why we have all these rules in place. And it completely disrupts it. Um, at this point, and because I am supporter of LGBTQ plus people, you have to choose between your sexual preference and your sexual identity and your sport at this time. You have to. I'm not saying it's fair, but um, it is what it is. Hormone therapy is banned. There's no, there's no fair way to put it. There's no, there's no wiggle room there. It's just, it is what it is. If I can test positive for taking NyQuil the day before a fight, which you can in the amateur, <laughs> then we're not going to allow any type of hormone therapy. 
You yeah, cannot I, go back also. And then I also mentioned that, you know, after puberty, no hormone therapy can replace what is, your body has done through therapy. You know, what about hand size? You know, bone density, all these things, the bigger lungs. There's just things you can't reverse. Yeah, reading into the decision, um, they uh, the IOC and USA Boxing um, in the specifics said, you know, that the, there has to be a, a gender reversing surgery and then four years of proof of what you mentioned, the hormone therapy for them to even be allowed uh, to fight. Um, yeah, you know, it's 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 something that kind of bleeds into another thing um, recently with you know, Clarissa Shields saying she she wants to fight a man. And then there's a sparring clip of her getting knocked out and, you know. I, I've read some of the comments saying, well, you know, the women spar the men all the time, you know, and, and I know why, because, you know, lack of, of sparring and also, too, you know, a lot of the times there's no one else your guys' level to spar and you have to go up against with the guys. Yeah, all the time, for sure. But you know, that's in a controlled environment in a gym. And just because Clarissa wants to fight a guy doesn't mean that you need to throw, uh, throw them in against young and up and coming developing boxers. <laughs> You know, that's, that's, that's Clarissa's thing, you know, and uh, yeah, we've all heard her say it and whatever, but it's, doesn't make it okay to, to bring them into the amateur scene and um, allow for these hormone therapy replacements still, you know, even if Clarissa believes that she can beat a guy, she's going to do it naturally and clean. It's, there's no hormone therapy involved in it. So um, that's a preference, but it's still technically, I guess legal if they allow it <laughs> what's what they're allowing for trans athletes to come and compete with women it's, it's illegal i'm getting the wrap because up the now uh michaela but for this fight with miss jonas who's putting her title on the line first time i feel in the professional ranks you're fighting a southpaw what can we expect from you what do you do different what what, what do you leave us boxing observers with that performance you plan on doing on that night in Liverpool. I ain't telling you nothing. I'm not <laughs> telling you nothing. All you guys need to know is that um, I've always had a great strategist in my corner when it comes to Coach Al. Um, and we are aware that there is different strategy that goes into fighting a uh, southpaw. And we've been working on it. And I'm feeling confident with it. So I'm excited to test myself against a very true southpaw which in Natasha Jonas. So um, it's going to be a fight. I think it's going to be very strategic fight because of that you know because of both lining up as a orthodox and southpaw then also because of our background and amateur pedigree but um if you guys know me like there's gonna be moments that we're fighting because i think we both really want it a lot on the line and you're not gonna want to miss it that all goes down january 20th at the echo arena in liverpool on espn plus michaela good chatting as always thank you good luck thank you thank you so much for watching this video and make sure to subscribe for more videos of your favorite fighters over here on Fight Up TV and give us a follow online as well at Fight Up TV on Twitter and on Instagram. We appreciate it guys.